Hello there and welcome to the series of videos going through the content of A-level maths. Here we're looking at integrating vectors, so we can answer questions from exercise 8e. So what we're going to see here is basically the reverse of what we've been doing in the previous section. If you remember, it is displacement that gets differentiated to velocity and velocity that gets differentiated to acceleration. We're basically going to be going back through integration um, acceleration to velocity and velocity to displacement. But remember, whenever you integrate, you need to add C to your integral. Okay, so we'll see how that affects the question in this starter one here. We have a velocity of 3ti plus half t squared j. At time t equals zero, the position vector is with respect to the origin 3i minus, uh, so 2i minus 3j find the position vector of p at time t seconds. Okay, so we are currently at velocity and we need to move back to position, which is kind of the same as s displacement. So in this case, we're going to be needing to integrate the velocity. So integrating velocity, we're going to get 3t integrates to 3t squared over two. A half t squared integrates to a sixth t cubed, and then it's plus c. But remember c is going to be actually um, made up of two different components. It's going to be an i component and a j component. So just bear that in mind that c is going to be a little bit more complicated than just some numerical value. Maybe even you might want to underline it because it is going to be a vector as well. So the way we're going to work this c value out now is we're going to plug in the value for t equals zero and use this information that we have in this second paragraph here. t equals zero will be at a position 2i minus 3j. So on the left hand side, that's where the 2i minus 3j is going to go. And then t is going to be zero in each of these brackets here. So simplifying what you've got here and c comes out to be 2i minus 3j. And that's a vector for c now. So what we can effectively write now is that this answer repeated again here, but we now we have the value for C. So this is our full final answer before well, we rearrange it a little bit. Uh, so R equals 3T squared over 2I plus a sixth T cubed J plus 2I minus 3J. So just bear in mind that with these questions here, your C component here is going to be a vector, not just a single numerical value. Rearranging this to put i's and j's together and factoring out, factorizing out those i's and j's, you get this full answer here. r equals 3t squared over 2 plus 2i plus a sixth t cubed minus 3 lots of j. Okay, so important takeaway from this, uh, from this lesson here is that um, c is a vector as well. We'll have a go at another question then. Acceleration this time is 4i minus 2tj. Uh, this second paragraph here is probably to do with what we need to find c. And then let's answer a few questions. Um, find the angle between the direction of motion at p and the i vector when t equals 2. So if we're finding the angle of direction of motion, the direction of motion is going to be the velocity. So to start with, we're going to be needing to integrate the acceleration here to work out the velocity. 4 integrates to 4t, 2t integrates to t squared, and then we have a plus c on the end. And now we need to root through our second paragraph here to work out what we're going to be substituting in next. It looks like t equals 3 will be substituted in with a velocity of 6i. Okay, so let's substitute that in then. So substituting t for the value 3 and v for the value 6i. Moving everything onto the other side, and we get c as a vector here, remember, is minus 6i plus 9j. So to write our final answer for velocity, it will be this thing here. And then grouping your i's and your j components together, we get... Oh, we want to uh, so we want to plug in now t equals two, don't we? Because uh, we want to find the angle of um, angle of motion between the i component and t equals two. So plugging in t equals two, we get two i plus five j. Lovely. So this vector here is going to be travelling two to the right and five upwards. 
And what we want to do is find the angle between this um, line here and the I component, which is the horizontal line here. So we want to find this angle here then. So let's go ahead and do that. So draw yourself a diagram. It's going to be two to the right and five up. And we want to find the angle um, in between this uh, direction vector here and the, um, and the horizontal. So a little bit of tan calculation there. Inverse the tan in degrees mode. And you get theta is 68.2. Lovely. So that's the answer to part A then, 68.2. Part B then, find the distance of P from O when T equals 0. So the distance uh, is going to be another integral. And we have velocity at the moment. So we're going to need to integrate our velocity to get the distance. Uh, what we've used here is a different letter D to distinguish between our C value um, that we had earlier. So this is kind of like the constant of integration here. We've just decided to use a different letter to represent that constant of integration. And we've integrated each of the individual components here, you'll see, um, to, to what they are respectively equal to. So now we need to work out the D value. So let's go back up to this information up here. When t equals 3, the position vector is 2i plus 3j. So substitute those in then. t equals 3, and the position vector will be 20i plus 3j. Simplify all of that, move everything onto one side, and you get d is equal to 20i minus 15j. So writing out your final answer with the d value in your final answer, grouping all the i's and the j components together. And then we need to answer this question here. Find the distance of o, sorry, distance of p from o when t equals 0. So substituting in the value t is equal to 0, we're going to get our answer. So the position vector is going to be 20i minus 15j. However, we now need to work out the distance, and that's a Pythagoras calculation. So we're going to be traveling 20 to the right, 15 down, so the distance from O to our position vector is going to be Pythagoras, which is 25 metres. Lovely. Moving on to the final question then. Uh, the velocity of a particle is given by V equals uh, 3T squared minus 8I plus 5J. When T equals 0, the position vector of P with respect to a fixed origin I is 2I minus 4j. Find the position vector of p after t seconds. So we've got velocity, we want to work out position, we need to integrate for this. So integrating here, don't forget to plus c on the end. And remember you're integrating each of the individual components separately to what they would naturally integrate to. We now want to find the value c, so we'll plug in t equals 0 and the position vector at time t equals 0 on the other side. So that will go on this side here, the 2i minus 4j will go on the left hand side, that's the position vector when t is equal to 0. And therefore you'll get c is equal to 2i minus 4j. So write out your final answer, but with uh, c as 2i minus 4j. And then put all your i's and your j components together. And you get this thing here, r equals t cubed minus 8t plus 2i plus 5t minus 4j. Part b then, so a second particle q with constant velocity um, 8i plus 4j, when t equals 0, it has a position vector of q with respect to origin uh, is 2i. Okay. So what we'll need to do then is we've got the position vector for um, the particle p. We want to prove that p and q will collide, so we need to work out the position vector of particle q. We've got its velocity. We now need to work out its. Uh, we've got its velocity. We now need to work out its position. So we integrate here. So integrating v, we get 8t plus 4tj plus d. Plugging in t equals zero has a position vector of 2i. So t equals 0, position vector 2i. You therefore get d is equal to 2i. 
and then from there write out its position vector with d equals 2i in it and group together your position vector uh, i and j components so here we are so we're halfway there now what we've got here are two position vectors one for p one for q and we want these two particles here to intersect that will mean that their i components are equal to each other and their j components are equal to each other so let's find out the time at which that happens at so find the value for t for which the j components are equal this is far easier than comparing the i terms let's have a look at the i terms usually i'd set both of them equal to each other and hope the time comes out to be the same in this case here for p we've got a t cubed which is going to be a very difficult equation to solve so what we'll do then is we'll just do it with the j components and then we'll plug in that value of t and hopefully that t value so the i component there will come out to be the same so, setting an equation where 4t is equal to 5t minus 4, why are we doing this? Well, we want the particles to collide. We want their position vectors to be equal to each other. So, therefore, both the i component positions will have to be equal to each other and the equation that we've set up here, the j component position vectors will have to equal each other. Collision means equality in terms of equations of positions. Rearrange this to get t is equal to 4 then. So what I'd have usually done is also have done an equation for i, but the i component looks pretty tricky here. So what I'll do is I'll just plug in the value for 4 into the left-hand side. So for q, that's going to be 8t plus 2. When t equals 4, I'm going to get a position vector of 34i on the i component there. And for p, hopefully it comes out to be 34 as well. Plugging in the value t equals 4, great, we get 34 as well. So 34 will be the i component to which they intersect. And we've worked out earlier that 16 is going to be the j component they intersect. So the particles will collide after 4 seconds at position vector 34i plus 16j. So just to recap what we've done in part b here, if we want to prove that two particles are going to collide, then you have to set the equations equal to each other, um, either the i components equal to each other, or the j components equal to each other like we have in this question here. You have to set both of them equal to each other. It's no good having one of them just equal to each other without checking the other one um, because that will just show that something is either just north or south of uh, or east or west of um, each other. Um, it's really important that both components here are set equal to each other. So here we are then. Your turn to have a go at this question here then. Pause the video and try this question out. Right then, let's get stuck into this question then. So we have a velocity vector of 3t squared plus 2i plus 6t minus 4j. When t equals 2, the position vector p is at 9j with respect to a fixed origin o. Find the distance of p from o when t is equal to 0. So, so far we have a velocity vector. If we want a position vector, then we're going to have to integrate velocity to position. So this is going to be t cubed plus 2t, lots of the i components there, integrating the individual components there. And then we're going to have 3t squared minus 4t, lots of the j components, plus c, which is going to be a vector. Now we know that at time t equals 2, the position vector is going to be 9j. So 9j will go on the left-hand side, and then on the right-hand side is going to go 8 plus 4. On the i components there, I'm plugging in t equals 2 here. And then for the second part here, I'm going to get 12 minus 8. Lots on the j components. Moving everything onto the other side, I'm going to have minus 12 on the i components. This is going to be 4 here, so I'm going to have plus 5j on the, uh, on the j component there. So my final answer here is going to be r equals... 3t plus 2t, sorry, uh, t cubed plus 2t, and then the i components for the c part is going to be minus 12, and then for the j components it's going to be 3t squared minus 4t, and then for the j components it's going to be plus 5 
uh, incorporating the plus C part in there. Okay, great. So that's oh, we want the distance from O. So now what we're going to have to do here is we're going to have to do, um, in fact, let's just do it all the way down. Plugging in T equals zero. So our position at T equals zero is going to be minus 12I plus 5J. And then we want the distance from O to this point here. This is a position vector. To get the distance, we're going to have to work out the magnitude of this uh, velocity of this vector here. So it's going to be the square root of minus 12 squared plus 5 squared is equal to 13. And I assume the question is all in meters. Yeah, it's all in meters. So 13 meters there. Great, so for part B then, the acceleration of the particle at the instant when it's moving parallel to the vector i. Okay, well that's interesting. Acceleration here, we actually need to differentiate velocity to acceleration. But first of all, we want, it, uh, we want to find the value t first when the particle is moving uh, parallel to i. So if it's moving parallel to i, it's moving in this direction here which means that it's actually going to be the j component here that's going to equal zero. So taking the j component of the velocity vector, that's 6t minus 4, which will equal zero. So t here is going to be 2 thirds. So this is the time at which it is traveling uh, parallel to the i vector. Now what we need to do is work out the acceleration at this time then. So we've got velocity we now need to work out acceleration. So we're going to differentiate what we've got here then. So it's going to be uh, 6t on the i components. The 2 differentiates to 0. And then for the second part here, it's going to be 6 on the j components. And that's it. So plugging in the value for t equals 2 thirds, the acceleration here is going to be 4i plus 6j. On the acceleration of p at the instant, yeah, this is the answer here. So it's 4i plus 6j there is the acceleration at t equals 2 thirds. And we worked out t equals 2 thirds by setting the j component equal to 0. That is when it would be traveling directly east or parallel to the i vector. Okay, so that's the answer to this question here then. Have a go at plenty of the questions from exercise 8e. Have a go at the problem solving questions, the exam style questions. And now that we've finished the chapter, have a go at the, ex uh, at the mixed exercise questions at the end of the chapter. Um, thanks very much for watching.